Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sex Sells Podcast, the podcast where a comedian talks to a relationship therapist about all things dating and relationships related in the modern world. We're back together. I hope you enjoyed our uh, respective Ask Me Anythings. Eliza's was definitely better. I rushed through mine like crazy. Um, thank you, everyone, who came out to my Melbourne show. Uh, there are a lot of you there that said you were listeners of the podcast, so I really appreciate that. Uh, that show is going to be on every month Aww. in Melbourne, and the next one is March 6th, so get around to that. And before I forget, actually, Daniel and I, who do improv together, uh, along with Max, who's a DJ and also a host, we're looking at doing some more private events. So we've done a 21st, we've done a few work functions. Uh, if you're interested <laughs> in booking two improvisers slash hosts slash comedians slash DJs for some private events, uh, just go to my website, go to the contact page, We'll give you a very cheap price because we're starting off doing some private events here. So uh, yeah, if you want uh, a uh, a guy with an eyebrow slit to uh, compare your uh, special day or special event, hit me up. Eliza, how how are you? How's everything? That's such a good idea doing um, like 21st and things like that or work bonding. Yeah, we did one of those. <laughs> activities. It was so much fun. <laughs> Really? Yeah, we were so worried about it because we'd never done anything like that. We weren't sure what we were allowed to yeah. say in the improv, but uh, and it was in an office. It wasn't even on a stage. So we just had to walk into this office. Everyone sat around at their desks, and we're doing improv there. Oh it was, my god! It was awkward at the start, but like uh, credit to the people there, they really got around it, and it was actually a lot of fun. Oh, that's so good. yeah, we'll. I would be so scared going in and then people not like in a work scenario and just no one responding or being like, I've got shit to do. Yeah, we would. Oh, <laughs> thank God we that were went petrified, well. But uh, it went really <laughs> well. So, yeah, if you want uh, some sort of corporate team bonding That's through awesome. improvisation, we'll help the uh, confidence of your team members and get everyone on the same page. Hit me up. Go to neilcohacker.com. Go to the that. contact page. Um, and yeah, we've also got a DJ. So we've got a whole range of uh, possibilities uh -huh. for private events. Hit us up. Just to organize a whole party and get in a different industry now. Yeah, sex sales party. <laughs> Start doing events only. Yeah. yeah. Events, <laughs> yeah. events management company, fun. need a PR team, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Entertainment, DJ, MC. Everything. Cocaine. All of it. You've literally got everything. Everything for your private event. And then I'll, I'll come in if anyone has like gets distressed and needs to cry. I'll just sing. <laughs> Sorry, just dropped heaps of shit. <laughs> Sorry, good. that hurt anyone's How ears. How have you been? Hopefully What's it wasn't been too happening? Loud. Oh, actually, I have a crazy story. So I got robbed two nights ago. <laughs> Whoa. I had the worst luck. Yeah. So eight months living on the Central Coast, I made it before I got robbed. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> and yeah, I know. And um, it was our own fault. We accidentally left a um, our car unlocked. Well, Adrian left his car unlocked. And what was really sad, though, is he left it unlocked because I asked him to order me cakes. Um because I felt like them. So he was carrying like these, all these boxes of cakes from his car. And then he was thinking to himself, I'll lock my car when I get to the top of the stairs. And I was like, quick, get in. I'm fucking starving. Like I want the cake. And he forgot. And it was the first time he's ever in his life left his car unlocked. So um, we noticed the next day, that was Friday night. We noticed the next morning that he, we couldn't find his wallet anywhere. And then we got to his car and we were driving around where he was the day before. And then he was like, hang on, like my AirPods are missing. And so is this, and this is missing. And he had heaps of cash in his car because he's like, a lot of his clients pay him cash. <laughs> so he lost like his whole week of oh, income. No. Um, lucky to have it, whoever robbed him. And uh, the saddest part was that he lost like this little, um, his family do this weird thing. I've spoken about it before, but they used to like um, make knives over okay. in france and so he had one that had been like passed down to him and it meant a lot and he left oh. it in his car so that was sad and i posted on the local facebook page i was like look i know it's our own mistake but like you can keep all the cash on the airpods and the wallet just keep everything we just want the knife back um put it in our mailbox no questions asked and then we would, adrian and i were driving around adrian was fuming about it and then i realized hang on we can track airpods <laughs> So we got the app up 
And thankfully, his AirPods had been activated since they were stolen. And they had been activated only 15 minutes ago. And they were like in a couple of suburbs away, 10 minutes drive away. So we were like, shit, let's go confront oh, him. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we drove to this guy's house or this person's house. And it was it was a bit um, dodgy. Okay. Yeah. So we were like should we go out and confront him or should we call the police? And then we decided we'll call the police. Um, and the police came out and they were like, and we were staked outside the house <laughs> for hours beforehand waiting to see if they'd do anything. And we could see the podcasts were like, uh, the podcast, the AirPods were moving around the house and they were like right on the end, almost between this house and the next house. And the cops came and they were like, well, just so you know, we can't do anything if, they deny it um like we can't go in we can't if they say no we don't have it we can't get in the house and I was like but it shows it's literally in the house and it was active a minute ago and they were like well sorry we can't do anything but we'll ask them so he goes and knocks on the door and this woman answers and she's like with this like nine-year-old girl and she's like I've got a 13-year-old son he's at cricket like I, I really don't think he was out in the middle of the night stealing things he's never left before he's a really like good boy and they were like oh can we look anyway and she let them in they were in there for ages they searched everything they didn't find anything and then when they came out we realized that airports had kind of moved actually to the house next door so we asked them like can you go to the house next door and take Adrian's phone because you can push this button that says like it sets off an alarm or like a beeping so you can find your airpods so they went next door and then they came out and they were like no no there was just a babysitter there and they're not there um so but then what was really annoying is that the alarm had gone off which means he was in like they were in a 10 minute radius (laughs) of the airpods and probably everything else that was stolen so they were like sorry nothing more we can do So anyway, long story short, we left and Adrian couldn't stop thinking about it. And we went, we were like, let's just go back and door knock ourselves. So we go back to this house and it was even kind of like dodgier than the first one. There was all these tradey trucks, um, utes parked around. There was like five cars. So we're like, they must be home now. And Adrian's like, like, do we have weapons? (laughs) Like so prepared for a fight. Um, and then yet sends me in to do the talking. So I go and knock on the door and it was the babysitter and she was like, I'm so sorry. It was that, uh, it was a kid I'm looking after. He snuck out last night. He's 15 years old. And, um, he took, I've got your AirPods here. And I was like, do you have the knife? Like, we just want the knife. And they were like, no, we don't have it. I'm so sorry. And then all of a sudden she's getting this call and the mum was watching us on that, on those doorbells that have a camera. And she's like, put me on the phone to them. And then she was like, I'm on my way back. I've been in Canberra and I'm going to rip him a new one. I'm so sorry. I've already called the police on my kid and I know who he was with. So it'll be in one of the other boys' houses. So we got them back, which was exciting, but we didn't get our wallet back. We didn't have to get the cash back and we didn't get the knife back yet <laughs> wow. but i do know that it was three boys and they all have mullets uh, okay uh, of course so <laughs> i'll be keeping my eye out wow <laughs> so annoying that's terrible but yeah. i guess that happens it was but it was so exciting like staking out and i don't know why adrian was like i literally thought we were gonna get stabbed or something and um but then he sent me in to knock on the door <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> but, <laughs> I'll, all, I'll keep all the all weapons safe and well. stay in the car. Yeah. <laughs> you go and risk your life. Yeah, I'll just watch. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, I... Yeah. Uh... And he was like, are you are you scared? Are you nervous? And I was like, not at all. Was What was interesting was that afterwards he was so burnt out from that whole ordeal. Like he was just exhausted. And it was weird seeing him like be so burnt out. He's like, this is the most stress I've been under in such a long time. But to me, that's like... I'll go through that 50 times a week at work, <laughs> knocking on doors with cops and stuff. But right, because yeah, that's the usual clientele that you have to deal with. Yeah. They're, they're used to that. <laughs> yeah. They're probably, oh, hey, I know you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. Oh, I'll give you the knife back. Damn. Yeah. Well, sorry to yeah. hear that. That's um, that's no good that he lost a fam- yeah. family heirloom. Well, it got stolen. He didn't lose it. But uh, Liza, yeah. you're too demanding with these cakes. What's going on? 
<laughs> Didn't give him time to close <laughs> the door. I know. Lock the door. It was, I know, it was my it was my fault. I'll take responsibility and I, I, prob- I won't take responsibility to him. No, I was like, oh, yeah. I should No, when it's robbery, but... we're allowed to victim blame. <laughs> that was you guys. Yeah. Should have locked the door. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly well it's funny because in the last oh, week i got a new pair of airpods and i kind of got a bit of a mullet going so you know uh yeah i noticed and some yeah slits. i got a <laughs> an eyebrow <laughs> slit in uh why not i think it looks good i'm just going all out with a different kind of look now new look new me are you gonna start wearing gucci no not at all no um <laughs> I want to get one of those like Chinese hair sticks and put it in my man bun, um, which is, I don't get the whole idea behind cultural appropriation. I'm showing respect to that culture. I'm uh, admiring that culture yeah. by uh, wearing it. And it's also a female, uh, y- y- well, generally a, uh, a female accessory worn by a man. So if you're woke, what do you do? Is it cultural appropriation or is it uh, a man subverting gender roles? Which one is it? You know? <sighs> Too complicated. Too complicated. Are you actually going to start doing well, that? I, I got really high and bought some off Amazon. So <laughs> I'm going to see what they look like first. And um, we'll go from there. So, uh, I'm excited. yeah, they're, they're due to arrive in two to three weeks. Uh, so maybe on the next podcast, if you watch the uh, YouTube version, you'll see me with a Asian hair stick in my man bun. Can you grow your hair and then do like little plaits and and then wear a gold chain? Plaits and a gold chain. That what look is that? Yeah. I'm gonna say gangster. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'll give it a like go. Like Snoop Dogg. Oh, okay, okay. When he used so to wear corn, plaits. Corn rose, is it? Or uh, what's the? He used to wear like actual plaits. They weren't corn rose. They were like little. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, actually, I've seen plaits. him do that. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm going yeah. for, I don't know what I'm going for. A bit of like half bogan, <laughs> half samurai. <laughs> Just finding your exactly. identity. <laughs> yeah. This is a reflection oh, of my inner nice. world. What's going on in there? <laughs> we have got two sponsors on the podcast today. So we all know Crush Organics. Yeah. Let's go through that one again. If you haven't gotten the CBD, CBD oil already, what are you waiting for? Go to crushorganics.com. Use the code Neil for 40% off in this very stressful time in uh in history with a pandemic going on and omicron (laughs) still ravaging through australia make sure you get a few drops of cbd oil every night it'll make you sleep like a baby get some of the gummies the bath bombs they've got everything everything you could possibly require i've been using the platinum oil for months now and it's done wonders for my sleep go to crushorganics.com use the code neil for 40 percent off that's crush with a k and to our listeners i'd like to uh proudly uh introduce our second ever sponsor on this podcast. I know we did a little bit with some other sponsors briefly, but uh, this one I'm very excited for because it's uh, perfect for our podcast. We introduce uh, Steady Freddy. Steady Freddy has a wide range of men's sexual health products. They've given me a pack uh, with a lot of things here. So uh, the one I really like here is the uh, Ball Boost tablets. So these are 60 tablets that will enhance stamina and sexual function. Supports sperm health and production. So I took a couple last night, and look, my swimmers are loving it this morning already. Uh, they've got uh, they've got condoms, ultra thin for a better fucking world. But probably their uh, their magnum opus or their best product, if you will, is uh, their uh, premature ejaculation spray. So if you struggle with premature ejaculation in the bedroom, if your girlfriend or boyfriend is just too hot and you can't hold it in. And you come after two uh, pumps. Yeah, pumps. looking for the word there. <laughs> you need some of this Steady Freddy Premature Ejaculation Spray. It's all natural ingredients. Uh, please go to steadyfreddy.com. And they've got a code as well. Now use the code SEXCELLS for 15% off. So that's our new sponsor, Steady Freddy. You enjoy it. Go and get some of the... Premature ejaculation spray, ball boost tablets, condoms, everything. They've got everything you could possibly need. All right. Second ever Literally. sponsor. How good was that? And cells with a C. Yes. So sex cells. <laughs> yes. All one word. <laughs> That's the code. And Steady Freddy. I like that name. Steady Freddy. It's got to be steady in the it's bedroom. It's so good. It's 
It's amazing. And I actually, like, I get really cautious of sprays and things like that. So I fully went and looked it all up, did all the research on it. And it's it's legit. Um, all the ingredients, like you said, they're safe, they're approved, natural. And what was really interesting is they have their own um, studies. And first of all, it's at least 91% effective. So it basically works for most people or all people that try it. And the other thing they said is that most men that or they did a study and it showed that men that used it um all the ingredients that were used in the spray went from lasting on average 84 seconds to then lasting on average between 11 and 18 minutes Whoa. so that's like a lot longer if you've you know on average been lasting a minute and a half to go to that is pretty incredible wow um so really interesting really cool stuff i'm excited for that um let us know. This beautiful box Please, that comes in as well. Please, if you use well. it. Enjoy your package. Packaging's on oh, yes. point. Packaging <laughs> on point. So there we go. Crush organic. Do you know what you should do? Free. Is yeah, I was gonna say get a couple of drops of Crush Organics, and then put a little spray on. Get a little spicy. It'll be like reaching. You'll have an epiphany. Everything you've ever questioned in life will suddenly reveal itself. I think that's kind of be the top tier combination. Wow. <laughs> yes. Relaxing and edging. Yeah. Yeah. You're yes. in a good tranquil mood exactly. and you're not coming. That's that's what <laughs> you need yet. to reach an epiphany, right? Just uh, close to orgasm. And well. Like it. Actually, yeah, they do say that like delaying orgasm can be really good as a mindfulness practice anyway. So can you hear this knocking from my neighbor or is it loud? Or can mm, you... I heard one very tiny knock, but we're all good. Okay, good. Okay, good. He does construction 24 hours a day, literally. So okay. can't avoid oh, it. Well, hopefully Love he him. leaves his doors locked or a kid with a mullet is going to steal his <laughs> AirPods. <laughs> He truly had the full Central the Coast experience. Was, Three teenagers with mullets stole from you. And I want to tell you his name so badly, but I won't. Is, Ty but is it Tyrone? It's the most, it's so similar to that. It's such a Central Coast okay. name. I'll tell you afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Love that. It's such a cliche. I got all the cliches yes. in one go. <laughs> oh, Sandy Coast, bro. Gozzy. He's going to be the next big Aussie uh, rapper. And uh, maybe those AirPods will yes. start off his fledgling Aussie rap career. And he'll thank you. Well, we got them oh, back. True. So <laughs> not no. anymore. He's come. His mum took him down to the police oh, station. So that's nice. Yeah, and then she messaged me on Facebook and was like, "I'm so sorry. I'm so mortified. Um, I can't believe my son." And I was like, "Honestly, don't worry about it. This this happens." And the silver lining is this is probably that moment in his life where it changes his path and hopefully scares hopefully. him straight. Probably not, but let's yeah, hope. Yeah, look. <laughs> She has five so, kids, oh, so okay. she's got a handful. Okay. Well, then, if you know, if yeah. three out of five turn out well, you've done pretty all right. Then I think that's a good yeah, ratio. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do remember as a teenage boy. I I think I don't think I ever did any shoplifting, but uh, a few of my friends stole for Fredo frogs and condoms and things. It was so sad. Uh, Fred and yeah, Fred. that's so cute. Fredo frogs and yeah, condoms. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what a weird combination to steal. Oh, I'm cool. I'm I'm fucking, but I also want a chocolate. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like I used to work with these girls and they would shoplift just bags and bags and bags of things. And I was like, God, how did you get away with so much? Like five pairs of shoes, dresses, makeup, thousands of dollars worth of things. Wow. Um, and I was just like, I would never have the balls to carry around, I mean, it's wrong, etc. But I would never have the balls to carry around that much soul and stuff. It was, it's insane how they do it. But yeah, she was like, it's so easy. She gave me all the tips, but I won't share them because I don't want to influence the, the teenagers that may be listening. Mm. <laughs> it's really yes. bad. Do not shoplift. Do yes. not shoplift. Okay, well, after that wonderful introduction, <laughs> let's... uh. Let's transition into a, a topic that I think we're both going to find very compelling. And uh, I think the listeners are going to find very interesting as well. Uh, so we want to dive into, well, vulnerability, but a, a specific situation where uh, in a relationship, one person is showing vulnerability and quite likely crying or being upset, usually about something regarding 
them or, or related to them in their life. What exactly should the other person do in that situation? Because this goes all the way back to a few weeks ago when I asked that question on my Instagram. What are some green flags in men? And I remember distinctly one answer was, when I'm upset, I want him to be upset. When I'm happy, I want him to be happy. And so she was yearning for a man who sort of uh, connected with her emotionally and felt her emotions. But then I've mm. also received messages from, uh, well, particularly women saying, when I'm upset or uh, in particular, when I'm upset at something my partner has done, he tends to get so upset to the yes. point where I feel like I have to take care of him or he's making it about yeah. himself. So let's dive into yeah. that because those are two contradictory ideas there. I want to know what is the uh, right course of action as a partner when your uh, significant other is upset and does that differ in certain situations if they're upset with you versus if they're just upset in general and does that differ mm. for different people do some people want their partner to be upset with them and that shows a form of emotional connection and, and bond and kinship or do some partners just require their partner to to be a rock in that situation to be a shoulder to cry on and to not make it about themselves because I've had yeah. uh, issues with this in previous relationships as well. Yeah. So uh, I think this also uh, can be related to uh, one of our favorite shows on TV at the moment, Maps. I just, uh, I'm a bit behind, but I'm watching it on Nine now, which I got to say is the worst app in the history of any streaming app. Fix your, <laughs> fix your shit, yeah, Nine now. It's so absolute it. garbage. Uh, but sponsor us. Yeah, yeah, sponsor, <laughs> sponsor us now. <laughs> But oh my god, the ads just <laughs> pop out of nowhere. You can't find the episode. It's a, it's a it's a nightmare. But and it's the same yeah, ad, yeah. on repeat <laughs> every time. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I digress. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting show. There's a lot of nudity <laughs> this year. But uh, specifically, I'm up to an episode where uh, what's her name, Celine, 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 Celine. Celine. and um, yeah. I've forgotten the guy's name, but he's a professional wrestler. I Anthony, Anthony, yeah. Um, yeah. So he's very vulnerable. He's sensitive. He seems like a gentleman. He's a very lovely guy. I love and him. And she yeah. is uh, clearly not attracted to his sensitive side. She's very closed off. Yeah. And I definitely relate. Uh, there's one particular ex-girlfriend that was... Look, it's it's the ethnic girls, all right? They're all like that. Well, okay, look, they're not all like that. but And it makes sense. They probably grew up with very stoic masculine fathers that didn't show emotion so when a man does show emotion they are not used to that that's my very mm. rudimentary analysis there but uh yeah mm. uh she didn't directly say you're not a man but she would make little comments saying oh you're gonna go and have a cry you're gonna go and have a sook things like that calling him princess exactly yeah so that's yeah. an example where uh, a man now, I know this is reality TV, it's all sensationalized, but this is just a, a very sort of salient example of a man being vulnerable and it backfiring for him. And, you know, he's an older guy, so I'm sure he's been through the traps and is very self-assured. Mm -hmm. But for a younger guy, if that would have happened, uh, it would it would make perfect sense for him to shell up in future relationships and not want to show mm -hmm. vulnerability and emotion. But then on the, on the flip side, yeah. uh, if she truly is unattracted, uh, with that sort of behavior that she shouldn't lie about that that should be out in the open as well so uh what are your initial thoughts on this uh on this subject matter well yeah i can i see both sides um i obviously am on the side that we should be always allowed and safe to feel vulnerable and express our truest emotions. And that was what was really sad about Anthony is that when he was sad and opening up, she was like, you could just see her rejecting it, getting so turned off by him opening up. And it was very much that toxic masculinity kind of shutting that down. This is not the role you're supposed to play. And then even at the start, he would say like in his audition tapes, he was saying, I'm a gentleman. I'll open doors to people. I'll always be really considerate of how women feel blah 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 and she was like all i want is a man that's considerate and opens doors and blah 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 so he was everything she was saying she wanted and then on their wedding night she was literally like i'm not used to this and i don't know if i like it um and then she punished him 
for that. And I know people always get shitty with us when we talk about reality TV uh, on this podcast, yeah. but I think it's actually really good because so many people can have seen this and can reference exactly what we're talking about, which is why we do it because it's like, well, you know, maybe a third of our watchers have watched maps and know what we're talking about right now. Even if you have it, it's still like, you know, an example of what definitely occurs in in com- very commonly in relationships is that someone may get uncomfortable, especially when it's a man. And we've talked about this heaps um, with them being vulnerable or emotional or sad or being anything that's not manly. So it was good to see that Celine was getting totally ripped online. Um, she's just been so hated for the way she has. I mean, I don't want to say that's good, but at least I think most people have the view that what she was doing was not right and no one is really supporting her in that view which is good but in terms of the two contradicting statements I get it because when I think what she says when you know when I'm crying and I want a man to cry with me and when I'm happy I want him to be happy with me I think what she's saying is I want someone to share that space with me like really connect with me and be present in that I don't think she literally means well, I'm sitting here crying because um, I failed my uni course. You need to cry too. I think she, maybe she had worded it yeah. a little bit like too literally. Um, but she means like, I want you present with me. And I think that like my relationship with Adrian is such a good example that when I'm sad about anything other than our relationship, he's so supportive. He's like, tell me what can I do for you what how about you sit here I'm gonna put on a movie I'm gonna make your favorite food like he'll go out and buy me flowers like he does so much to support me but when I'm if I'm ever upset about our relationship it does do that flip where it becomes because if I get upset about something in our relationship I'm at like a a one out of 10 or a two out of 10 because I genuinely haven't been ever that pissed off with him for anything. Um, but if I say something small, I can't even think of an example because there really hasn't been anything significant ever. But let's just say I said like, you know, I'm, I was a little bit upset that you didn't pick me up from the bus stop. This has never happened, just a random example. And, you know, I'm, I come home and I'm a little bit moody because I had to walk in the rain or something. And then because Adrian has anxiety, he makes that situation tenfold because it's about our relationship and he feels she's not feeling secure in our relationship. She's doubting the relationship. That's his anxious thinking. So it becomes a huge ordeal for him. And I'm just here sitting here mooding, moody, not really caring, just like eye rolling or whatever. And he's freaking out. And then he might start panicking and then having a meltdown or whatever. And then I end up having to look after him. And then I I experienced this actually with all my boyfriends, probably because I have similar (laughs) taste in guys. um, And a lot of them are quite like, I would say, wear their emotions on their sleeves. And every single time I'm like, I I wasn't even that upset. Like, and now it's turned into this big thing where I have to look after you and, and deal with you or help you through your anxiety. When this is the one time in six months I've tried to have a moment and just be moody and I wasn't allowed to have that moment. So I see the both sides of that. Like, how do you, and then I also see the confusion was, well, then what do you do? Because sometimes, you know, if someone was, I, I perceived if I had ever perceived something that Adrian was doing as he no longer wants to be in this relationship, I would of course be having a meltdown tenfold as well. But because, you know, I don't have that anxiety, I don't have anxiety in general, those thoughts have never crossed my mind. So I haven't ever responded in the way that he responds. Um, So it is a really kind of fragile and and sensitive things because I also couldn't have to be really careful of how I work. I have never said to him, let me have my moment. Let me be shitty. Like, Um, And don't cry. This is about me, not about you. But I have said to him, like, do you need more explanation of how upset I am with you? Like, do you need more explanation about how pissed off? Do you actually need me to put it on a scale? One out of 10, five out of 10 or something to help you understand the depth of my moodiness or my anger because it's rarely anything significant that you actually have to get worked up about it's as simple as saying oh I'm sorry babe like let's do this together tonight and then I'll forget about it in two seconds but I think knowing your situation and what happened to you last time it's different and I feel for you I'm on much actually on your side 
for this because she was very much saying our relationship is at breaking point. So I think it's fair to react in an emotional state. And I didn't think it was fair that you react to her saying that. And then she's like, don't have a reaction. This isn't about you. It's about me, <laughs> right. so, which is exactly <laughs> kind of what happened to you. Yes. Don't yes, you think? that's true. Uh, yeah. The first thing I'd say is I, I, I think a good point of reference for especially men who've maybe experienced this particular situation is figure out if you have an anxious attachment style or an avoidant attachment style. My guess is that yeah. <laughs> most of the men who react this way have an anxious attachment style and there yes. might be some uh, inner work to, to do uh, in regards to your relationship with either your mother or your primary female caregiver when you were a child. So I know I, I love my mom to death. She, I, I suppose, wasn't the most overly affectionate mother. And I think some of that stems from that. Uh, and mm. you're right in saying there's a, there's a very clear distinction there when the uh, vulnerability is in relation to the other person or to the relationship itself then a lot of a lot of men in particular but uh, i'm sure this goes both ways uh, you can get into a panic mode especially if you've got that anxious attachment style and it's very hard to yes. be uh, to to just rationally listen to what your partner is saying and you're you're much more likely mm -hmm. to blow it out of proportion um so the first thing to do mm -hmm. if you've experienced things like that is to first uh be aware of the fact that you may have an anxious attachment style and then detach from your emotions and feelings. Uh, maybe take some time for yourself if your partner has expressed some form of uh, sadness or frustration towards you or towards the relationship. Don't react immediately. Take some time to just assess the situation as much as possible. I know it may not be easy, mm -hmm. especially if uh, your partner is, is, is heated and uh, an argument is brewing. Uh, but... Yeah, it's it is a hard one because having been that guy who reacts that way, I'm not in control of that. That's just a very natural yeah. response. It's the person I love getting yeah. upset at something either I did or something in the relationship, and that's a very natural response that's very hard to suppress. And mm. I uh remember a few weeks ago uh my partner was uh upset about something not not to do with our relationship just about something separate going on in her life and i felt upset i mean when i'm connected to someone like that i do feel the emotions mm. they feel and i am connected yeah. with them in that way and i actually remember in this situation i tried to just be the the shoulder to cry more than anything else i actually i let myself be a little bit upset but i i i did there was a little voice mm. in my head that said, all right, this is your time to be the boyfriend, to be that man, mm. if, if, or just the, the, yeah. uh, the carer in this situation and not mm. get too upset and say, oh, that's similar to something that's happened in my life. I just sort of really yeah, focused on what she point. was uh, expressing to me and it, it seemed like it, it went well. Um, but for a lot of people, their natural mm. response is to, well, to, to be upset as their partner is upset and then to, to relate it to something that's gone on in, in their life. And that can come across as mm. very selfish. Uh, I know it's not, it's, but exactly. if that happens to you, that's mm. it's, they're not intentionally making it about themselves and, and being selfish. That's just a natural response. It's, it's how some people mm. connect with other people. But it's good to be aware mm. of uh, those characteristics and, and which way you may sway in that situation. And and not to necessarily control yes. it, but to take small steps when your partner maybe expresses something that's minor, uh, work on your reaction to that and, and, and do everything you can to not blow it out of proportion. And also there's a, there's a flip side to this too. If your partner's upset all the time about every little thing, well, you know, then it might be a them problem and not yes. necessarily a you problem. Mm. So all of these situations are very contextual and, and sort of nuanced. Um, but there, there yeah. is a very clear distinction when uh, someone is upset about something regarding the other person and regarding the relationship versus mm -hmm. when they're just upset about, like you said, you, you know, their, their work or their family or because or, mm -hmm. that's not necessarily a, a personal attack or that's not felt as though it's a personal mm -hmm. attack. And yeah. it's very easy to be rational or to just express a healthy amount of emotion in that situation and, and show enough emotion that you're uh being empathetic without uh being selfish because again it's just it's a 
it's a tightrope if anything you want to show empathy but you don't want to be uh selfish i suppose that's the extreme end there's there's sort of a lack of emotion emotion emotional unavailability empathy which is exactly what you want and then mm. selfishness and and you want to try and hit that mm. middle ground well yeah subconscious selfishness and i think that's kind of the key point is that when if you have an anxious attachment and you respond in that way when you feel like your relationship's at threat like you said you you can't control how you respond and it's kind of like you know we have a a small baseline of where we usually sit when things in our life are going normal and average or whatever and when something threatens that or or your relationship or especially when you have an anxious attachment you're instantly out of your window of tolerance and once you escalate or so you maybe get what we call like um hyper arouse which nothing to do with sexual libido it just means that you're escalated or si- or sometimes it's hypo where you go like you dissociate and you shut down which is also something people with anxious attachments can do and um once you're in one of those spots it's really hard to think rationally and think and have that thought process that you had where you were like i need to at this point i need to be the support for my partner at this point i need to sit by her and and nurture her because once you're heightened or you know too far down it's all me 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 whether or not you can rationalize oh i'm being selfish and i'm thinking about me you don't have those thoughts it's like this is not right this is not right racing thoughts or completely shutting down so before if you feel that you're outside of your window of tolerance and the amazing thing is that 99 percent of people will be able to figure out when they're outside of their window of tolerance it's basically when you're not feeling like your normal self and you're heightened or whatever when you feel like that don't respond until you're back in your window of tolerance so don't you know react or anything do what you can to get you back and for some people it takes a couple of minutes um especially if you've had a healthy childhood it may take you a couple of minutes and for other people it may take you literally two hours before you return to your baseline but even still you you need to communicate that to your partner and have that awareness about yourself saying if you get upset about you know my relationship or if you accuse me of cheating when I didn't cheat or whatever I'm gonna freak out and it will take me a couple of hours to calm down before I can have a calm conversation and reassure you and listen to you or whatever and I also think that what are the, the thing I had to learn as the partner with someone with an anxious attachment is that I also have to step out of my selfishness because initially not with Adrian, but, you know, in previous relationships when I was learning about this and before I really knew about it, I would always be thinking like, God, this is my time. Like, stop making this about you. Like, I just want to be fucking upset one time without then having to come and look after you or or whatever. Like, I don't want to have to be rational. I don't want to have to be therapeutic every single time, blah, blah, blah. But now I've realized that, you know, as as someone that is dating someone, I also have a responsibility in this relationship. So if I were to get upset with Adrian, I literally say to him, um, like, this doesn't mean anything about our relationship. Everything is really, really good. I'm still like, you know, I still love you, still adore you. I'm just a little bit moody because of this. And this is what I need from you. So I actually have to kind of pre-explain what I'm going to be saying to him and and setting the scene in that it's not a crisis. Um, and that's something that I've had to learn and it, which was difficult because, you know, you don't want to have to you when you're pissed off and you're angry at someone, you don't want to have to then say, don't worry, I still love and adore you because you're mad. But that's something that I have to do. And so that we can have an effective and gentle communication without any escalations. Mm. It looks like I'm crying. I'm no. sorry. <laughs> I've got something in my eye. and It's burning. Oh, you're just thinking about <laughs> how wonderful Adrian is. And you're crying. Okay? <laughs> I look like I've got pink eye in one eye. <laughs> oh. Um what that could indicate if a if a partner is getting extremely upset when you're bringing up issues in the relationship or with them is that they really adore you and you mean a lot to them and and your relationship means so much to them and that can often Mm. be misconstrued as jealousy and and possessiveness and all these negative words which what is the there is not that much of a difference it's just the way these things are interpreted oh this person's possessive versus Mm. this person cares so much about the relationship that 
they're not in their right mind when one issue is brought up because they want it to be as good as it possibly can be and it reflects on them yeah, to such a degree. It's all how you just perceive exactly. it. Exactly. So I would yeah. encourage people who maybe experience this uh, to, to just change their perception about it. I'm not saying to ignore it by any means, but um, it, it's not mm. that they're being selfish. They can't, they can't control that mm. feeling. Uh, it's if anything, it's that they value this relationship in you more than anything else in their life, and so in that way, it can be perceived as very yeah, romantic and, and, and noble. But I suppose the inverse of yeah. that is, uh, okay, does it get to a point where it shows a lack of emotional maturity and a lack of emotional intelligence, and therefore it can be unattractive to certain people, um, and that the, the the other uh, aspect of that is that people could just grow up in a in a different household or have different ideas about uh, what is attractive, and it could just be inherently unattractive. But uh, I had this is purely anecdotal, but I have a lot of female friends around your age, sort of late twenties, that uh, often wanted a, a boyfriend who was a, I suppose, more on the sensitive side and, and caring and gentlemanly. And then they actually dated someone like that and, and would say something along the lines of, oh, he's so he's so sensitive or he's too intense or it feels like it's work. It feels like I have to take care of him. And I remember, mm. I don't know if you know mm. Teal Swan. I know she's a bit controversial, but you'd really like mm. her. She's very, uh, very spiritual and uh, <laughs> loves her crystals. But uh, she had this great video called um, men when to cry and when not to cry. Now it's a very clickbait title because it sort of insinuates yeah. that there's an appropriate time to cry. But with romantic relationships, uh, we should be at least trying to assess behaviors and working on ourselves to a certain degree and, and be in control of certain things to make ourselves the best possible self for the context of a partnership. But in her video to summarize what she was essentially saying is that if a man cries that shows he's not closed off emotionally, for example, he sees yeah. a little baby and, he, and it's so beautiful that he, he brings a tear to his eye. That's very attractive. Yeah. But if he's yeah. crying, uh, that makes her feel like she has to take care of him. That's not attractive. That's basic. She was very, she was very direct in how she said it. Um, so an example, I can't remember mm -hmm. a specific example, uh, but I would assume it would be something along the lines of like, oh, you know, I don't like this man you're talking to and it's making me upset and maybe he starts crying or like, I feel like you're going to leave me. and Right. So about, again, about the relationship, not necessarily like my grandma died, I'm yeah. crying. And she's like, don't you fucking cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like that uh, at all. But uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, it, sorry. When it's, uh, okay. I, I have to rewatch that video, but I remember just think it was a year ago and, and it really, uh, yeah. it spoke to me. Now it was just a 15 minute YouTube video. Right. It's not, nothing really, uh, uh, deep and complex, mm. but the, the, yeah, to, to summarize it, it was essentially if, if she feels like she has to take care of you to a, to a huge degree, I mean, uh, to a certain degree, that's inevitable in a partnership. Yeah. But if she feels like she constantly has to take care of you, Similarly, I, I think this goes both ways. I don't think this is a uniquely female yeah. thing. Uh, however, yeah. because so, some men, I know I'm like this, actually really like taking care of, of their significant other. And I sort of yeah. yearn to, to be that f yeah. patriarchal figure. And pa patriarch, I'm using that word in, in, a, in a different context to yeah. how it's normally used. But that yeah, sort of yeah. caring, benevolent figure that, that yeah. is helping my partner. I really yeah. like doing that. Uh, but there's also a limit. Mm. If every day she's crying, I'm going to eventually be like, all right, I'm not your yes. dad here. Like, you got to fix this. You're in your 20s. Mm. But mm. that was the um, crux of what she was saying. And how do you... Yeah, it makes yeah. a lot of sense. I I agree with that. I mean, I think, yeah, it has to be differentiated. I think it uh, personally, partners can cry about relational issues or things like that. Like if I did something that upset Adrian and it really bothered him and he cried I wouldn't be any less attracted to him and also in those times where people are crying you don't have to feel attracted to them it's not 
it's I think it's when you get turned off or you get the ick or whatever where it kind of becomes problematic and I do agree with what you said before about you know how can we perceive this in a way that this person is cares so much about you um that it's brought them to have such an emotional response there's obviously manipulation on both sides that can be you know you never know which side it's going to be and it's up to you to determine I know that when I dated someone and if he cried um and he was really he had really severe anxiety and he he honestly cried a lot this was years ago and if he if I ever got upset and he cried um I would look after him and because he gets so anxious and I'd be like, it's okay, hug him, whatever. And then it turned into this thing where anytime I got upset, he would do it. And it was almost like he learned that he can get out of anything or not have to be held accountable for anything if he cried because I would always be drawn to look after them and I couldn't keep a straight face or I couldn't be like blunt and sit and watch someone cry in front of me and even he said after like two years that well when right around the time we were breaking up he was saying that he knows he does that because I can um he'll know that I'll look after him and not be upset and we'll forget about the whole thing but he was like I can't stop it it's like instinctive and it was one of those things where I didn't have that boundary in place um to to demonstrate to him that actually, yes, you can get upset, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to look after you about everything, which is what happens now with Adrian, who's also anxious. When he gets up, if he gets upset and he cries about something, he can. But if I'm upset, I'm, I'm not, I don't have the responsibility to cuddle him and, and help him through this when he was the one that's pissed me off or something. Um, and we can, be calm and talk like adults and work it through and he can sit there crying and be like look it just really bothered me that you did this and if he's crying I'm not going to drop everything like and that that was something that I had to learn is really those boundaries so and just finally as well about that anxious attachment yes it does happen a lot of the time with your relationship with your mum it can happen with your dad but what was interesting is in all my partners that I've dated that have had anxious attachments, uh, which seems to be a style I really attract, <laughs> is that <laughs> none of them really had mummy issues, but all of their parents had divorced or had significant, like, turbulent or almost violent relationships. So I did find that's an interesting common denominator across that. And I think it's because they never were able to perceive a healthy and safe relationship. And it's something that they, instead of recreating subconsciously, they desperately sought out a secure or someone that seems like a secure person like myself. They desperately seek out secure people um, in order to create what they deemed as a safe and loving relationship because that's what they yearned for in their childhood the most. So they try to make that happen. And then when that feels threatened, it's instant meltdown or instant anxiety and stress. Mm. It could have also been that uh, one parent or both parents were just hypercritical of the child and as a result yeah uh, every little Mm. criticism is blown out of proportion because you think it's potentially uh, life-changing this could be a point where your parents leave you or you're uh, they're just you know withholding love forever so that can then manifest Mm. in uh, exaggerated reactions in later adulthood so there's all sorts of possibilities that can cause this, it could also just be that person's personality, various intrinsic yeah. attributes that they may have. Uh, so uh, what advice would you would you have to people, generally speaking, it's very contextual. I think the first thing I would say yeah. actually is, is first have a conversation with your partner and say, hey, when you're upset, what ideally would you like me to do what do you want people yeah. to do what how how yeah. do you best respond in that situation uh have that conversation i i had that with my girlfriend a couple of weeks ago and it was very fruitful mm-hmm. so uh it was definitely not something i did in earlier relationships but have that conversation yeah. and ha- you know ha- ask them how how best can you feel heard what what should the other person yeah. be doing? Do you want them to relate it to certain things? And does that help you feel connected to them? Or would you rather them just mm. listen and respond? Or 
Some people actually want, uh, I was actually, my girlfriend's different in the sense that she actually wants problems to be solved. Because a lot of, <laughs> that sounded... Perfect for you. You're yeah, like, yes. I'm like, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Winning. But I was talking to her and, and then, yeah, I was articulating that uh, a lot wow. of men don't understand that uh, women just want someone to express empathy and, and sympathy rather than to be the logician that solves everything. But she was saying, no, no, no. If I have a problem, I'll only express it if I actually want it to be huh. solved. Otherwise, it seems like a waste of time. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got a winner here. <laughs> hey? uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good to have that conversation because people differ. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of men will say, myself included, when you hear girls saying we want someone who's vulnerable we want someone who shows emotions first of all we wonder if it's reactive or proactive so did they just come out of a relationship mm-hmm. where the man was emotionally unavailable or you know grow up in mm-hmm. a culture where men were very stoic and never spoke about their feelings at all and as a result they've sort of romanticized the idea of an emotional man like one of those characters in a romantic comedy who is very expressive with his emotions, but also very attractive mm. and intense and loving. But then when they actually yeah. uh, have that relationship or, or, or men will go through a relationship with these women that the first couple of times they express emotions, it's perceived really positively. And again, this is anecdotal. I don't know what the overall trends for this are, but there actually there are statistics that say when men have shown emotions, uh, it's often backfired. Something like 50% of men said that. Um, this was in an article I read a couple of years ago. I don't know what it is now, but uh, so so coming back to that, it the first couple of times I express emotions, oh wow, you know you're such an emotional guy. It's so beautiful that you could express that. But then when it gets to a point where it's perceived as too much, then suddenly the uh, opinion of that changes and oh you're just emotional yeah. all the time. And that's oh, because I'm like, it- shut up, I got to take care of you. Yeah, and so. It burns out your partner. Yeah. It bur- it's a big burnout. And guys relate to that too. If they have a girlfriend or a wife that cries at everything, absolutely, they get it. They, be- they get so burnt out by it. And you're like, oh my God, you- she cried about this yesterday, about this situation. And then we talked about her work thing for an hour. And then today she's crying about it again and had to have the whole fucking conversation again. And I guess my advice would be if you're with someone that is likes to express their emotions cry- crying, um, and just often criers actually just like to have that instant release of emotion and then they're fine afterwards. And people that aren't cries are confronted by that because they are like, oh my God, they must be so upset because they've got to the point of crying. But it happens daily. So some people just like to cry because it helps them feel better and they're like, I can get this emotion out and then process mm. it. And it's not actually a huge deal. So if you're with a crier that cries frequently, don't feel that you have to sit there and unpack every conversation and be like, oh, we'll put movies on, we'll do this. Sit there with them for that moment and you can speak to them like you would speak to someone that was bothered by something and it's not, um, you know, and they're not crying. So like you can, you don't have to baby someone, especially if it's a regular occurrence, that doesn't mean they're in crisis. You don't have to be so over the top supportive you can just sit there and listen and be like yeah that's fair i'd be pissed off about that too and leave it at that um so which seems odd at first because you want to like wrap a little blanket around them and make them a tea but when you've done that eight times in the last you know few weeks you're like fuck yeah, <laughs> i just really want to watch the, my yeah. show <laughs> yeah um and you that's why it's important that you say like you said what do you expect from me? Because that person might turn around and be like, I don't need you to look after me. I just want to cry. Like, you can just do your thing. That's okay. So ask how, like you said, how do you want to be looked after when you're upset? And also, I always encourage people to communicate. This is what it looks like when I'm upset. So like, agent will be like, when I'm upset, I, I get anxious and I withdraw. So it may look like I'm not willing to talk to you, but I get like lost. He gets lost for words. So he actually is kind of more like a shut down person. And I know that when I get upset, I get so like robotically, um, I go so unemotional, which is kind of, I guess the opposite of what people do. And it bothers, it has bothered a lot of partners or I'll try to explain it so I don't know if it comes across condescendingly, but I try to be so clear that it comes across too unemotional being like, it really bothered me when you said this and it pissed me off. 
And that's where I'm at. And then I used to have a boyfriend be like, why don't you fucking cry? Why don't you just get pissed off? And I'll be like, because I don't feel like it. And let me process it how I want to, whatever. But huh. yeah, now I explain in advance. Like, please note, I am an emotional person. I am a compassionate person. But when I'm upset, I had to explain it so clearly and like, you know, explain it like I'm five to you. And I'm not going to have an emotional reaction in front of you. I just won't. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so don't expect it from me. It's interesting. You know, when I go, I suppose when I'm upset, I just like to sit down and have a really calm conversation as much as possible. But if I feel like it's getting out of hand, I just try to avoid the situation Mm. then, which I've then had an experience where that was taken the wrong way. Where my girlfriend a a, a couple of years ago was, uh, this one situation comes to mind where uh, I felt like she was being so unreasonable about this one thing where, uh, I'd had some conversation with a journalist and she was saying, oh, I'd been flirting with her or something. And it was just ridiculous to the point where I'm like, I can't even do this. And then I didn't say I can't even do that. I'm just like, I need a break. And I, I walked, I just walked out of the apartment and went for a walk. And she panicked. And then, yeah, she got made it even worse. She's like, oh, you can't, I needed someone to, you know, care for. And now I, re- I realize when someone sort of, when you feel like you're being attacked, it, it, most of the time that's when that other person needs to be comforted now it's very hard yeah, in they're the just moment looking for reassurance because if you're actually yeah. being attacked you want to be defensive so it takes a lot of uh, yeah. emotional maturity there to say all right look hey 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 look you know i'll just, I'll just comfort the person but uh that yeah. that can also uh create problems when like we both said earlier um when you're in a heightened state of emotional arousal you should just distance yourself from the situation because the other person can take that personally as oh you're just walking Mm -hmm. oh you can't handle the heat or like you just giving up on on you know you can't handle me at my worst that kind of mentality and that can add another degree of uh, complication to the situation but i think a lot of this can be ameliorated if you have that conversation with your partner when everything's going well and say hey when you're upset and let's yeah. even talk about when you're really upset when 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 you're almost at breaking point what do you want from the other person and it's probably good to have mm-hmm. that conversation regularly so you're reminded of it because again when you're in an argument you're not always well you you are not thinking rationally and you you sometimes yeah. have to be reminded of a few of those uh expected behaviors it's so true yeah because when you're upset you don't want to often you don't you can't think you can't say when someone says what can i do for you you can't think in advance or on the spot but you're like i don't know i don't know like adrian says that all the time if he's upset and i say do you want space do you want to talk i don't know i don't know now we've had that conversation obviously what do you want to do and there is such a routine for if he gets upset or anxious it's literally i turn on lord of the rings and I order him something sweet. That's it. That's all he wants. Lord of the Rings and that's something adorable. sweet to eat. And that's like his like little self care strategies. He's obsessed with Lord of the Rings. Um, so he watches huh. it like like once a fortnight when he gets stressed about something or whatever. But I don't have to ask anymore. Um, I know I know what to do. And he, I'll be like, do you want to have a bath? No, no, no. Like I don't know. I don't know. And as soon as I do that, he's just calm and like he's like a baby, literally, just calm in ten minutes. Wow. Um, so it's good to know, like, what is someone's self-care it's strategy? How, what makes them feel good? Yeah. <laughs> so cute. Sorry, do me an interrupt. No, no, that's that's all. I don't have something that I need. Like for me, if I'm upset. Like I don't, I, I don't know. I couldn't even, I couldn't answer it because I'm like, ah, oh, it doesn't really happen that often. So I don't know. Um, I don't really, even now when someone would be, if he came and asked me right now, I'd be like, oh, I don't know. Sometimes I don't really want to talk about it. Or I just, for me, it's just don't push me. If I don't feel like talking about it, mm. <laughs> don't make me saying like, oh, make you feel better. Uh, but Adrian's a very like nurturing. He's so, he's such a nurturer that it's very instinctive. He'll just do like 50 million things for me and then hope that one one of them sticks. Um, like his love language is very strongly acts of service. So he'll be like, oh, I hung out your washing. I'll cook you dinner. I cleaned this. I did this. Um, I've got you this. I bought you this online. Like he just loves to do things for people, uh, which is good for me. So That's great. Yeah. And as long as that's <laughs> yeah. not uh, 
misinterpreted as manipulation because it's it's clearly not. Yeah. It's clearly just a show of uh, yeah. gratitude and love, uh, an expression, <laughs> I should say. Yeah, I, I think when I'm upset, I need a little hit of serotonin. So I need to go and actually do something else and, and feel a little sense of accomplishment. So I'll, I'll go and do a workout or read something. Or I wish I had that desire to work out when I'm stressed. Oh, I'm so jealous. That's so good. <laughs> suppose it is, yeah, because then every time I've had a... Uh, whenever I experience a really bad hangover or I feel like I've uh, uh, indulged in too many hedonistic activities, I immediately get back into work mode and organizational mode and I'll write, write a list of things I need to do and uh, in order to feel accomplished. That is a dream. And, You're so good like well, that. I feel like if you and I combined into one person, it'd just we'd be such top tier. <laughs> everything I lack, you have. What do I lack? <laughs> and everything you lack, I have, I what reckon. What do I lack? I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nothing. Absolutely nothing Not at all. Rash. I'm too rational. Femininity. Yeah, How yeah, about that? Right. <laughs> yeah, rational thinking. <laughs> mm. That's it. You're you're all logic, and I'm Is all that a heart. Bad thing, though? And we got to get. No, it's not. And it's not bad to be all heart either. They both have pros and cons. Yeah, we need, need a, a third person. That's all gut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. We need a balance in society. Oh, do you? I don't know. Anyway, that's a different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Is your is your partner also like you in that she's really very logical similar and things like yeah, that? Yeah, very. I figured out we're yeah. very very similar people. Uh, and she did that yeah. uh, test from why him, why her, and she's also mm. a builder director, which actually surprised me because she's got to do that. I very like that. compassionate as well, and I thought she'd be a, <laughs> maybe a builder negotiator or negotiator builder, but no, she's also I. Uh, has to some degree an obsessive mind she's very uh passionate about psychology and and she just got into masters yeah. as well so shout out to wow. her congrats um, and yeah we're very she very sim- like we you. have very similar upbringing as well even though she's not mm. indian but similar s- cultural similarities growing up with mm. a, a migrant family and going to a selective school and even grew up in very similar oh. areas so yeah. yeah. Um, Isn't that interesting? Really, really Some things good I feel like so you, you, it's so good to align with your partner on those things. Like, especially like, you know, if you're, if you're a real head thinker and, or a real heart thinker, like Adrian and I both heart, we're both like, not to say you guys aren't the nurturers or anything like that. You are a very nurturing person, but we always decide like, does this feel good? And that's how we make our life decision. Whereas you're like, Let's make this plan. Let's let what is the logically the best thing I can do for my life? How can I better myself? Like you think about it all through your head. So mm-hmm. I think it's important actually. It's really good when it matches with your partners, although sometimes I'm sure it'll be better to do a little get a balance from someone else. But I'm sure that if you and I had dated, we would clash on so many things. We would just be so clashing because we're so different like that. Yeah, probably. But- yeah, I think my uh ex was uh <laughs> Yeah we were opposites we were polar opposites and uh it's just yeah. the classic cliche where there was just this intense attraction initially yeah and, but we were completely initially. different That's we when, were yeah. actually diametrically yeah. opposed like she's very <laughs> like i think she is yeah definitely a feeler and uh a feel, yeah. feel, <laughs> cop in a feel uh she would go <laughs> she was very adventurous she wanted to go uh to a different location every every couple of weekends go and explore mm, uh, yeah went to india to you know find herself and very oh, wow. uh, a lot of people would say Spiritual? yeah what? no not that specific i'm actually more on that kind of like i do meditation and got essential oils or whatever mm. but um she, <laughs> nice. she it's not like she wasn't organized um she's very organized but we also clashed politically and ideologically yeah. on certain things and i remember yeah. one thing that just that was like near the end of our relationship where i'm like okay we're not compatible um i was talking to her about my uh, my mortgage or something and she was like why'd you buy a place so young and i'm like all right we're not we're just not the same people like <laughs> that just this like so much stress bubbled she up didn't get from it. her yeah. even saying something like that <laughs> and uh, that was like a, a real point where I said, oh, wow, yeah. this isn't. But yeah. then even when it ended, it, it yeah, the like anxious attachment definitely 
came out. Uh, but I also, you know, people should end things in person, I think. Don't do it over message. Did you not? She didn't, no. So I think that's, I think that's not nice. But Shame. anyway, it is what it is. I'm in a very, yeah. very happy, fulfilling relationship now. Yeah. Um, unless, unless, sorry, just to yeah. clarify, unless your safety is at risk. Yeah, okay. Then Definitely. you can break up with someone. Definitely. Well, if you're going to get stabbed or something or punched. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Not that no. you would, <laughs> but in general. Absolutely. <laughs> now that you've got the slit in this eyebrow, who knows? That's it. Slit in the eyebrow and a man bun. Oh, will I rob you or be offended? Who knows? <laughs> who does know? This is a whole new look. Yeah, this is true. the next big fashion trend. Eyebrow slit and, yeah. and half mullet man bun thing going on. And, and look, this other little... Yes, I've, here. I've seen some teens doing it on TikTok, but... Okay, when it reaches our generation, which you're starting it, yeah. you're like, you know, Moses going through the water. <laughs> I don't you. know if he went, <laughs> did he go through the water? Yeah, he did. But, you know. He parted the water. Yeah. Spread, and he walked through. Parted the water. He spread the water. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, I, I know I say this every second podcast, but I'm just obsessed with the idea of having a personality and, a, and, and, a, and attributes that just completely don't match my look. And I find that, like, I love that in people. Adrian's the same. He's, like, fully tattered, tradey, and he's, like, the sensitive little vegan. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's – people are always surprised. So I like that when people – it's not what you expect. Absolutely, It's good. All right. Well, I think that's a, a good point to finish this one. Uh, let us know if you have anything to add in the, in the YouTube comment section or if we maybe didn't cover this fully or, or missed something, send me an email. Uh, send me an email if you'd like to book me and Daniel for a private event. We're improvisers. I'm also a host comedian. We've got Max who's a DJ as well. So uh, like I said, we've done a 21st. It went off. We did a work function so we can do any private event because we're just starting out. We'll do it at a... Are you Sydney only? Well, I mean, or? if they're willing to pay for the... Uh, if, if that's part of the budget because the one we did... We did one in mm. Newcastle. They paid for like accommodation oh. and, and things. So... Cool. Yeah, I mean, if it's all sort of part of the budget, we're happy to go wherever. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, but primarily, most likely, it would probably be Sydney. Yeah. Uh, but if you can coordinate with our monthly shows, we could probably do, you know, hook something up there if you're in Melbourne or soon Brisbane. Soon yeah. some monthly shows coming up there. Really? Yeah, the goal is uh, weekly in Sydney and then monthly in Melbourne, Brisbane, Newcastle, and then we're, we're yeah. actually thinking west of Sydney now. It's a big population centre. And then at the end of the year, yeah. do a big theatre tour of the other, you know, like your Adelaide, Perth and, you know, That's whatever so else is in Australia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Hobart, maybe. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's How the good. goal. Yeah, the shows are going so, they're so much fun. It's so much fun to do shows that aren't just oh, me. That's so, good. come along. Yeah. Um, and a big shout out to the people who already have come along. Go to crushorganics.com, use the code Neil for 40% off, and go to steadyfreddy.com, use the code sex sells for 15% off. Uh, we will Woo-hoo. see you next time, guys. See you next week. <laughs>